This week on the All Woman Show, I tell you the story of a 40-year-old lady from Nakuru who has lived half her life in agony and humiliation. She suffers from fistula, a condition she developed at the tender age of 14. Her husband, who is physically challenged, is her only fortress. When I met in Violata, she looked like any other ordinary woman. But beyond the worried look on her face and the loose-fitting, torn but sportlessly clean clothes is a deeper story of agony. As she peruses through her stack of medical documents that have become part of her life, Inviolata reveals to us her nightmare. For the last 24 years, Inviolata has been facing stigma from everyone around her, including her own family members, due to the fustula condition she developed at a very tender age of 14. The only support that she has is her husband, who is also physically challenged. Maisha nini pile nyanyangu alishindwa nae kutulinda. Kwa sababu sasa hata ilikuwa ni wakati ambao hata tungechuna matawi, tuwekele kwa sufuria na tuikule tuivyo bila yoyote, bila chochote. Ilikuwa kati mwingine hata naenda kwa kishagi na naomba watu wa kishagi hawa watupatie ile unga ya chini tufagie hiyo hapo hiyo sasa ngine tunafagia hiyo unga tunaleta tukiona kama iko na harufu nyingi sana ya petroli sasa zingine tuachane na na ilikuwa kati mwingine tunakula paka jirani wanasema hii nini itakuja kuwa nini kuwafanya hata mtakufa sasa sasa hiyo tuka nini tukaachana sasa shosha yangu akaona hivyo na ka, alijadiliana na wale nini kama shangazi yangu sister wa baba yangu hao Sema sasa, ivi utafinyika, ivi sapaka, sangapi, na watoto, na hata hauta in Violata says poverty in her family drove her into getting married at the tender age of 14. The family was counting on the dowry she would fetch to make ends meet. Sasa wakantafutia mwanaume. Sasa saizo wakati nilienda, si kukua hata nini wakatuwa mimi nime, nimejua yu maneno. Sasa ilibidi hata waniweka katika nini yu chumba kwa lazima. Wanifungia hapo, wananichuku, wanasema ukitoroka hapa hivi, hapo hiyo ni itasiweza. Sasa kweli nililazimishwa kukaa pale. Mpaka ni kule nilikaa na huyo mwanaume na nikapata mimba hiyo. Huyo mwanaume nae pia ya ninuwa katuo, nae alikuwa na miaka 17. Kwa sababu hata nae ilikuja ikapatikana, hata nae hana wazazi. Hata ya mebakia tuwapo ilikuwa ni hali hile, haenda ya kachungi watu ngombe ama alime shamba na hakuweza nene kutoboa. Sasa mutu mwenye alinioza kwa keju, shangazi yangu ndi alikuwa meolewa karibu na yei. Mm. Na kaona hivyo, ndi ali, aliamua kutunganisha sasa. Nine months later, it was time for Inviolata to bring her baby into this world at the Busia District Hospital. But a more complicated fate awaited her. Just before the baby arrived, Inviolata, who is epileptic, suffered a serious bout of the disease. Her life took a turn for the worse. Nikaenda kwa bafu. Vile nilienda kwa bafu, kukaa unenu kutoka huko, hivyo nimesha maliza kuoga, kufika inja nikashikwa na kifafu. Na vile nilishikwa na kifafu hapo hivyo, na nikaanguka hapo kwa fulo. Sasa vile nilianguka hapo hivyo, sasa mimi saizo sijijui. Sasa na wanenua ya waliniambia nilianguka kifudifudi. Sasa daktari wakakuja kunichukua hapo kunipeleka kwa chumba ya kuzalishia huko. Sasa huko vile walifanya si kujua. Jumimi wakati walipomaliza kunizalisha hivyo, nilijijua baada ya siku mbili, ndio nilikuja kupata ni kukawa kwa menueka katika rumu ingina hapo, niko peke yangu, menueka kwa kitanda hapo hivyo. Ndiyo kuenda kujiangalia, nikawana jinsi wa menikata huko chini, wa menikata tu hivyo tu. Chini wa kwa tumbo wa mapanjia njia, ya kike? Njia ya kike ndi wali nikata. Hmm. Sasa wali kata hivyo, na wakawachanisha hivyo. Sasa hali ile vile nilikuwa nimeinuka kwa kitanda hivyo, nikawana kitanda nilikuwa nimelalia, imeloa kabisa. Eh. Sasa wame kuuliza daktari hivyo, daktari akasema hata ni bati yako umekua hai. Hata ile hali nyo alitoa mtoto, hawa kutoa nini zote. Jua anasema hata mtoto alikuwa nakatika tu, wanashika ni nini zinakatika. Sasa kuna nyama zinyata zilikuwa zimebaki ndani. Sasa ilikuwa hata wakati mingine na simama na zinanguka chini. The doctor informed her that he thought she was dead. That is why he operated on her the way he did. Sasa hapo hivyo nene, vile niliuliza daktari vile nini yo hali niko, daktari anasema vile mefanya ya likuwa na dhani mimi ni mutu wa kukufa. Mm. Ndiyo mana kafanya hivyo. Na kama nimeamuka tena niko hai, mm. ni shukuru mungu hapo hivyo. Sasa kuanzia hapo, 
ndio wakasema nikawauliza sasa huku chini na vile mmenikatoka akaniambia hawawezi kuunganisha juu zile nyama za mtoto msingali ziko ndani hapo kuna nini uchafu iko ndani mpaka zianguke eh mm. zitakuwa zinatoka hivyo tu kwanza sasa nikakaa kwa hospitali miezi mbili yote kitu nyo walikuwa wananiweka ni maji wananiweka ndani maji sasa na hali hapo hiyo na wakapata hata pia mkojo pia inatoka mm. eh sasa ndio nini hiyo kukaa hiyo muda yote hapa ya nini huku chini sasa bila walikata hiyo hiyo nyama ikawa wanaona ni kama imekuwa kinonda mm. wakaniambia hawawezi kushona ikiwa hiyo kinonda hiyo sasa wakaniambia niende nyumbani tu paka niende nipate nini nipate pengine kukula ndio ifike nini damu irudi kwa mwili ifike kwa katula ambayo nita, nitafanyiwa operation Invalata has since been in and out of different hospitals across the country to seek treatment for her condition her dreams of having a child were shattered in 2012 when she was told by doctors at the Kenyatta Hospital that her uterus had been blocked due to fistula. Sasa hizo unajua nilikuwa na complain kwa vile wameziba huko nene tumbo ilikuwa inafura na vile ilikuwa inafura saa zingine hata mtu anaonekana mmoja mzito na wewe sio mmoja mzito. Kumbe damu ile inakuamia ndani ya tumbo na iko mahali penye hata ilikuwa ni upande moja hapa hivi ambao ilikuja e, inakuwa mandani. E, nilikuwa naenda kilini kwa nasema damu imekuwa imekosa mahali pa kupitia. Kwa hivyo imekaanda mahali pa nene side nyingine hapo hivi. Sasa waka nene wakaniambia eti hiyo mahali penye msiba hapo inatakana niende ni watoe. Ndio nilienda Kijabe. Sasa kwenda Kijabe, Kijabe wakasema tunataka 1030. Eh, hiyo ni ya daktari tu peke yake kama kitanda hakuna. Na kitanda wananiambia ni shilingi 700 kwa siku. Kwa hivyo sasa kulikuwa na mama mwingine pia tena naye nilikuwa nimeenda kumfanyia kazi. Eh, sasa yeye eh, vile tulienda naye huko wakamwambia hiyo ndio pesa ninatakikana. Sasa na huyu mama hakukuwa na pesa ya kulipa saa hizo hiyo cash. Sasa akasema hata hiyo hata mimi sidhani kama utanifanyia hiyo miaka yote ifikishe 1030 na tayari hali unanifanyia kazi na ninakulipa shilingi 700. Now, Invalata is forced to look for menial jobs to cater for medical expenses that keep rising by the day. But even keeping the odd jobs is a big challenge. Sasa nimekuwa kwa kazi ya kwenda kama ya umeidi hivi. Sasa tena hiyo kazi ya umeidi na kila ambacho sasa sana sana hata watu wengine wa umeidi hawanitiki. Mtu hawezi kubadia uwe mchafu kama hali hiyo ni unakaa kwake. Alafu unafanya aje kazi na huku katika hali hiyo. Hii kazi hii nini kwa kufanya hivyo kuwa nini kuwa na beba mangu. She has to make do with these used t-shirts as diapers. Natakana ikiwa wet utoe ubadilishe. Sasa ni kiti nye nafanyanga haneni kwa sababu sana sana mimi nikienda mina chagua upando wa kufua. Ndu jubande yu upando wa maji yu huwa nataka sana kwa sababu kundi huwa na jificha sa zingine ili nioshe hizi nguo zangu hizi. Sasa ni kiti nye hata sa zingine unezaenda mahali na upata hata hakuna mahali pinyo utanikia hizo nini. Sasa itabidi tu ni ili arufu isijaye sana ile nguo ndio unakuwa naosha tu na narudisha ikiwa tu hivyo baridi ikiloa naosha tu na narudisha tu ikiwa hivyo e, na unakunja tu t-shirt e, e, t-shirt kikubwa e, inatakana ni ile t-shirt kikubwa ndio ukunje ndio ndio unaweka huko sasa na ndio unaweka unaweka kwa underwear e, na vaa underwear hata kama inatakana na vaa inawea tatu e, ndio nimevaa hizo na ninachukua paper bag Sasa nawekelea hiyo t-shirt nimekunja imekuwa nini kama hivi kipadi na nawekelea hapo hiyo kwa hiyo t-shirt. Her husband Joseph Ogola is her fortress. This man has stood by his wife through the difficult times in spite of whispers from his neighbors. Sikuwa na shida. Juu nilikuwa nataka mtu akukaa na yeye. Bibi wangu wa kwanza alitoroka na akaenda kafa. Sasa niliona ni at least niwe na mtu kwa kukaa na mimi na ingawaje alikuwa mgonjwa hivyo nilisema tutajaribu tupate bila na certificate ni hao hata wakisema nini hata wakinongana sana mimi vile niliitikia niliitikia Ogola says epilepsy has made her wife's condition all the more challenging na improve na ina, ina, wakati alitoka alitoka Kijabe kulikuwa na improvement kintena vile alitoka kijabi akaenda no, not vile vile alitoka kijabi vile alitoka kabarnet kulikuwa na improvement sasa vile alienda eldoret aliporudi sasa haikuwa vile ilikuwa alipokuwa nini 
alipokuwa nini gabarnet in violata faithfully attends the countrywide free fistula camps and hopes someday she will live a normal life again medically fistula is an abnormal connection between two hollow spaces but in the case of inviolata, she suffers from obstetric fistula, which is a hole between the vagina and rectum or bladder that is caused by prolonged obstructed labor, leaving one incontinent of urine or feces or both. When we find the patients in the hospital after the fistula uh, has, has occurred, we find that there is a, a wound, because the fistula is actually a hole. So the wound is, uh, is most of the time septic, that means infected. And uh, as much as we are able to do the repair, we find uh, it takes it is a challenging repair because most of the time the patient needs even physiotherapy before undergoing the, the surgery for the for the fistula repair. Also, as uh, we have found, most patients do not spontaneously come to hospital for treatment of fistula. For women with obstructed labor, labor that goes on unattended, the labor can last up to six or seven days. The labor produces contractions that push the baby's head against the mother's pelvic bone. The soft tissue between the baby's head and the pelvic bone are compressed and do not receive adequate blood flow. Sasa nikaka kwa hospitali miezi mbili yote. Kitu nyuma walikuwa wananiweka ni maji, wananiweka ndani maji. Sasa na hali hapo hiyo na wakapata hata pia mkojo pia inatoka. Mm -hmm. eh, sasa ndio nini hiyo kukaa hiyo muda yote hapa nini huku chini sasa bila walikata hiyo hiyo nyama ikawa wanaona ni kama imekuwa kinonda. The lack of blood flow causes this delicate tissue to die and where it dies holes are created between the laboring mother's bladder and vagina and or between the rectum and vagina. This is what produces incontinence in a fistula patient. Obstetric fistula most commonly occurs among women who live in third world countries. If a woman's labor becomes obstructed, she could remain in excruciating pain for days before her baby is finally dislodged. The baby likely dies and the woman is often left with an obstetric fistula. A woman with fistula is too often rejected by her husband and pushed out of her village due to her foul smell. However, in Inviolata's case, she is lucky to have her husband stand by her, but her family on the other hand rejected her and her neighbors. They say behind every successful man, there's a woman. On the All Woman Show, I will be telling you the story of that woman. This week, we feature Priska Namwamba, the Budalangi member of parliament, Ababu Namwamba's wife. Before he goes out there to do any speech or anything, or to make a decision, we talk and make decisions together. Before he goes out there, I make sure he's clean, he's well dressed, he's well fed. That's my responsibility, I'm a wife. Yes. Anything he puts on, I decide. I'm his supporter. I make sure what he says out there is in accordance to the family values. At 31, she works for a top parastatal, is a mother of four, and is married to one of the most vocal and vibrant politicians in the country. And to crown it all, Priska Namwamba also holds a position at the National Assembly Lady Spouses Association of Kenya. In Budalangi constituency, the voters turn to her when issues arise. She's the hidden strength behind Budalangi Member of Parliament Ababu Namwamba's success. For the first time, she steps in front of our lenses and reveals the intrigues of her life in the first lane of politics. I'm involved in politics a lot. Like the last campaign, I did the, I did the, I drove the whole campaign all the time because he was out there doing the national campaign for the presidency. I was in the constituency. I went around all the, the whole constituency with a team of young people campaigning for him. Apart from that, after the election, I talk to the people in the constituency. When he's not able to see the people in the constituency, I take part in it. And I also empower women in the constituency. But things are not always rosy in the limelight. For Priska, having a husband busy with national issues means she's always ready to step up and fill the gaps. Once they are told it's me to see them, most of them take it positive. They give me the information and I, I'm, always, 
I always give them the promise that the information will reach Mwishimiwa and they like it. They like it that way because if they don't see him, they don't have any other option but me. She's grown to love politics, but has her marriage to a key figure in the opposition changed her views on politics? Having been with him for a while has made me like politics because politics has a way of influencing some issues. People have voices. They're able to push for some issues. You can see the positive and negative of a certain idea. Politics has a good influence, I like it. How do you deal with the long hours away from home and the many trips that um, Oshimua gets to take? Sometimes I sit back and imagine what a pilot's wife feels like or what they go through, or even a Makanga's wife. The Makanga's wife has to wait to the, for the husband until midnight. And then I look at the other side of uh, a woman whose husband goes to the industrial area every day, walks all the way to the industrial area. And then I just thank God because I have a husband, yes, he goes for trips. Most of the time I tag on him. If he goes to Mombasa, I'm with him. If he goes to Budalanya, I'm always with him. If he goes to long trips, I take leave and join him. If I can't do it, I just stay home and take care of the children. Priska says that although the children will sometimes miss their father due to the pressures of the job, they do enjoy the occasional trips when they are allowed to accompany their father. And on the days that they have to stay home, mum is always there to reassure them. Sometimes it takes two weeks. That's the most it takes, two weeks. And he can be out there for two weeks and come back and go to the constituency for another one week. So they keep asking for him but I talk to, to them to understand the kind of work their dad does. So they have come to understand that our father is a politician, he's a leader, he belongs to many people in the constituency and everywhere in Kenya. So they take it positive, yeah. But anytime he has time, he comes home and enjoys time with them, 24 seven, he's there with them. Triska ensures that family time is not interfered when her husband is home. Like Sundays, when he's not on those long trips, Sunday is a family time. We do not, politics cannot even get in between our family time. We value family time a lot because family is the best. Family comes first. If anything were to happen out there, your family is where you land. You have nowhere to go but your family. So we maximize. We maximize on Sundays. Whether we are in the constituency or here in Nairobi, we maximize on Sunday, we go to church and come back and spend time together. Priska's life gets scrutinized a lot. Recently, social media was abuzz with pictures of her and her husband on holiday. Actually, we've done many trips before that trip. Like we went to, the, to Victoria Falls. I posted. Uh, it could trend on Gutter Press. And that was the very first time they talked about me. We went to Taj Mahal, which was noted by media, but they took it the wrong way, but later I corrected it. We went to Slovakia as a family, spent time together. And then Iceland. Actually, it was a treat to me for Mother's Day. And you know, me being a mother, to many in the constituency. I just wanted to share with my friends, my colleagues. Uh, I didn't know how it would end up, but I just wanted people to know where I was, what I was doing. Yes, he's a family man, but he takes time off to enjoy with me. Ababu's wife says that with the constant negativity associated with politicians, she wanted to portray a different picture. Well, what I do to sustain the relationship, you know, in life there are things you may do or things you may say that may never influence people out there. But the things that people feel inside their hearts, and I would see it, people felt something and they keep asking me, please tell us what it is you do. Are you never affected by Mipangua candles? You are just there, we don't hear about Mipangua candles, you are just there strong. I'm like, I'm the woman, I have to take control. He's the husband, he's the head of the house. And how does she deal with situations that threaten her marriage? The thing that helps me is praying. Yes. We pray a lot, 
we have values that we share together. I respect him, he respects me back, and I trust him. So whatever anyone can say out there wouldn't move me at all. Tell me about the lowest moment that you've ever had. The men in black, that moment at Kasarani, I didn't like it. It was the most difficult part. Uh, it was nasty. Politics can be nasty sometimes. But we learned how to handle it. And then the other thing was pack. Mm, about the negativity, the critiques. We also handled it and we went through it. Now here we are, moving on. The thing I learned to do is how to handle every challenge that I face in life. I always look at the positive part of it and spin it around. Yes. I don't want to look at the negatives and work on the negatives and think of what to do. No, that will drain me. Yes. Just be positive, be happy about it, love, pray. Praying is the most important part of it. Yes. Ababuna Mwamba recently stated that his life was in danger. Priska admits that the turbulent times took a toll on her. She was distraught. I told him, <laughs> told him this is too much, can we do something about it? Then later I came to realize, to come to pass, you know, he always tells me, baby, these things will come to pass. We can handle it and we pray together in difficult moments. Priska is one of the many strong women behind powerful, influential men in the society and the crucial role they play, the sleepless nights they spend often go unnoticed in the public eye. If he gets the credit, that's us. We are one. Najma is smile for the old woman.